Hey, Becky. Welcome, everybody. Happy Friday to you. I'm glad everybody's here. Thanks for being here. It's been a good week. It has been a good week. So, okay, if you've been tracking, the last couple of Fridays, we've kicked off the year talking about trends. Um, you know, Becky and I have talked multiple times to just say, we feel like we have this really special seat, getting to sit in these chairs and talk to these innovative folks that are doing amazing work across the industry. And these topics have bubbled up to the top um, of just, you know, things that we need to pay attention to and the things that we're completely missing, you know, all at the same time. And the more that we have these conversations, John, the, it's it's what, like that old adage of the, the more I learn, the less I feel like I know. Like <laughs> so it's true. just, I am just so hungry for this content. And, and I think one of the things that has just been driven home to me over the last couple of months is that one, we're in this brave new world and we're all trying to figure it out and how to work so much smarter, <laughs> more than harder, because yeah. there's just new challenges that are in front of everybody. But the thing that I'm thinking of is that, you know, we have some incredible parallels in nonprofit to entrepreneurs and, and, and people who are really radically doing amazing things in the world. And the ability to bring those entrepreneurial mindsets into nonprofits I think can actually radically change the way that we do business. We're, we're both hustlers, you know, we're both incredibly driven. We've got to use creativity to leverage things. And there's so few of us that we've got to be able to scale things. And that is why I'm so excited to talk about our topic today. I love it. You know, because if you are familiar with our story, you know, Becky and I, we were in the seats at a development shop for the last 15, 20 years working on the inside of trying to push a mission forward. We're marketers disguised as fundraisers. We're frontline fundraisers. We've done all the things, but we know that also being in a nonprofit, you start to get a little walled in, you know, you start to even us that I think you like to push the envelope and try to stay creative. I think it's easy to sift into doing things just the way that they've always been done because gosh darn, let's be honest, it's easier that way. It's oh, easier it's to not have to change and pivot and grow all the time. It can get exhausting. And so I do love camping out in this idea of how do startups think differently than your, your nonprofit today. And so one of those topics that's come up in the trends, and it's also come up as we look at entrepreneurial mindsets, is this idea of syndication. Oh, that I'm word so ring excited. a bell? <laughs> I didn't know what you meant. The right? Like for at least two weeks, the first time you told me about this a couple of years like ago. The normal use is like, oh, we know we watch Full House. It's on syndication, <laughs> right? <laughs> and maybe that applies somewhere, but we're going to teach you at what we mean by that. And we're really going to talk about it in the lens of we want you to look through the lens of syndication about what you do. Because I know from working in a nonprofit, you feel strapped for time. You feel overwhelmed. There is way more people to talk to and way more conversations and strategic things that need to happen than you've got in your day. You need to prioritize self-care and taking care of you and your family. So you just can't keep, keep, keep working. You know, you have to like find your boundaries. So syndication is going to give you the permission to do that. And I'm so excited. About I that. am too. So I really <laughs> want to define it for people. And, and I will say it's the we are for good definition yeah, <laughs> because exactly. I don't know that how it's applied just in small businesses or in companies that are startups is the same as nonprofits. So we've kind of tried to look at it through the lens of a nonprofit. And it really means taking one really strong piece of content and turning it, turning it into a micro burst of content that can be tripped out in all of your communication uh, vehicles. And so this is what I mean. I mean that you may have an impact report and let's all like visually think about our impact reports or annual, an annual reports. Report. Maybe it's a newsletter. Think about how much content is in there. You are literally pouring in <laughs> to that piece of content for months sometimes, wow. creating content, capturing interviews, photos, quotes, um, executive director letters, whatever the things are. And then what do we do with that? We send it we out. Bundle it up we bundle it document. up and then we drop it one time Yep. ever. That's crazy. I mean, when we say it out loud, that sounds crazy, right? You know what we're talking about, right? So this is this is really 1.0 is getting that out. And I'm so proud. If you've put out an impact report or that magazine or that newsletter in the middle of the pandemic, I'm giving you a pat on yes, the back. Yes, I am clapping and for I you as well. And I want you 
to get the full exposure that it deserves. And so this idea of looking at it with a syndication lens is saying, what are all the pieces of a content? Like literally draw a grid on, on a sheet of paper, five boxes, five rows, five columns, you've got 25 boxes. Look at your impact report and think, what are 25 different things within that that could be a shareable piece of content? That's in its simplest form what syndication is all about. It's not just one drop. It could be 25 drops of all the different things, wonderful tidbits that are within it. And you've got to, th- we're shifting mindsets again. Mm-hmm. So you're an article in that impact report. Maybe it's a donor story, or maybe it's a story of someone who has helped. We can't think of that as a singular piece of content. Totally. That could be broken up into several pieces of content. Is there a quote that's powerful that could be lifted out? You know, could we drop part portions of that story in chapters, you know, on let's say Instagram, you know, one of my favorite storytellers of old of all time is Brandon Stanton. And humans of New York, he started follow. humans of New York. And if you are not following humans of New York on a social platform or buying the book, yes, I own all of them. <laughs> Brandon, please sign them someday. <laughs> It is to me the most powerful glimpse into humanity ever. And the way that he story tells it is so interesting. And the syndication is key. He may have a very long, important story, but he can't post all of that, you know, with character limitations. And just because by virtue, you lose people in a story on social media platforms, they're into scrolling. And so what he does is he might take one incredible story and he'll chapter it out and you'll know he's chaptering it out because it will say at the very beginning, one of eight in parentheses, and then he'll begin the story. It's like how many people in your social media following are literally waiting for your next post? <laughs> you know, how do we become None the Brandon <laughs> Stanton? <laughs> exactly, right? But when you create value, and this is something I really want to share today too, is focus on creating value. Yeah. Don't just put out noise, but where can you create value multiple times all the time Um, through the content that's already existing. It's really just looking at the content you have or you have access to through your organization and delivering that value repeatedly over a period of time. So we just feel really passionately about this because we think that it's an interesting way to use communication for engagement. And that is really, again, as we talk about the 2.0 version of how this will change the way we think, it's really about how do we not just communicate and push our messages out? It's about creating a two-way conversation where we're putting out content and we're asking our people, what do you think about it? How does this touch you? How does, how does this resonate with you, this statistic? You know, it, it, putting a call to action in there. We're looking for five volunteers to come help us with our hybrid. You know, tell us why you love us. Why are you giving? Having a way to engage is going to create a more robust relationship between you and your audience. Some of them probably have never given to you, or maybe they've given to you once, or maybe they just like your mission and they're kind of just voyeuring a little bit to get your vibe. This is a way that we can kind of reach across the aisles, say hello, show them what we're all about and ask them what they think about it. And I just think the power in that when you think about it through the lens of the long game and what you can do to bring somebody along to your mission over a long period of time, I mean, every one of these little posts is something that's enriching the relationship and bringing someone closer to a gift, to a volunteer activity. Taking action. Doing something that really moves your mission forward. And I, I love what you just said, Becky, because it's all about listening And I think there's listening on the front end. I mean, it's watching what comments are coming through and what shares are happening, but it's also listening to the analytics, you know, and looking for trends because I think there's going to be organizations, you're going to find that the stats are what resonate, you know, and then there's going to be organizations that the story is always going to be the winner, but like you can experience that when you're creating a lot of different content and putting it out there you have the ability to see what really registers. So you're in a completely different place when it comes to end of your giving, or maybe you do a big push in the middle of the summer. You're going to know what kind of content really resonates with your people, and you can create your campaign all around that type of content. So it really is working smarter, not harder across the board. Can I tell you the thing that makes me the most excited about this? (laughs) Please do. I mean, I know you know that I'm, I always go to die on this hill, but (laughs) I am so excited about the organizations and the individuals who are going to glom onto this idea and it's going to challenge them to have a different voice in the space. 
I think gone are the days of talking like a corporate robot. I mean, you've heard me talk about that on the episode. We are not in a clean and buttoned up kind of an atmosphere any longer as we interface. If we know anything about social channels, those who are thriving are the ones who are human, they are vulnerable, they are authentic. authentic. They are replying, you know, in a timely manner. They're not coming three days later into this conversation Some when it's not answer. relevant mm-hmm. with, yes, a boilerplate. This is our opportunity, nonprofits, to step out, find our voice, show that we there are humans on the other side and engage in a way. Please, please bring out your emojis <laughs> when you engage <laughs> in this way. Bring back your all those adjectives and adverbs you put in a drawer. Or please bring them back out because this is a space where it will have resonance. Because it all comes down to, you know, something that we always talk about. Community is everything, yeah. right? How are we using content to build communities? When we do that, we are going to build really robust communities. With, when we're using vulnerable language and really talking authentically about our mission, those that community is going to turn into believers. And when you have believers of your mission, everything is possible, Right. Um, movements and the greatest movements ever were started by just dedicated group of people with the same ideals, right? And so that's what we want you to do. This whole concept of syndication, I feel like truly has been game changer for us as we've understood it and applied it. And of course, we leverage this and just how we produce this podcast and how we syndicate content. So you're probably seeing us on different social channels. And it looks probably like we're in a lot of different places at the same time, but it's through just working smarter and not harder. So I'm a visual person, you're yeah, a visual you are. person too, right? We're marketers, of we course are. we're visual. And so just to hear this, I think it's hard and we know that, but we are so all in on this and we feel belief in the power that you as in your nonprofit sphere need to really implement this strategy. And it, you're going to find a lot of positive gains from doing so. We have put together, surprise, a workshop. Spoiler, <laughs> Free. <laughs> Free. And we would love to share that with you. It goes live next week. You can catch it at weareforgood.com slash workshops. And we'll alert you when it goes live. But this is going to be a 45-minute masterclass of exactly how to implement this. We literally are going to walk you step-by-step to take you from a piece of content that you've already created or something that you're going to create fresh and turn it into really content that's going to guide you for the next several months, maybe even the next year if you do it correctly. And so it's a very powerful, high leverage tool that we just want everybody to have in their arsenal. So come get it. Come get it. Because if you love John's graphics, which (laughs) I do, and I think John's an amazing designer. I mean, we, we know this is a big topic and we know it's a lot to swallow. And so, you know, like any webinar that, you know, web, you know how I feel about webinars and conferences, and I want them to be drastically overhauled. We wanted to take that feeling that you have at the end of a webinar of like, I like this, but I don't know what to do now. We wanted to eliminate that feeling completely. So we've added all of these free accompanying worksheets and templates that are going to walk you through how to do it. John has designed them. They look gorgeous, but it's supposed to be foolproof so that anybody could do it. If you've never even been on social media, we want to outline how to do this gently. We want to walk you through this because we think it's so revolutionary to creating this impact uprising that we're talking about that creates just a whole new veneer on nonprofit, the way that we engage, the way that we humanize and talk to people, the way that we're making a place at the table and showing that everyone matters. So come check it out, go to the website. And we just really want to thank you for being open to the idea of we need to massively innovate this sector and we needed to innovate it before we had a pandemic, but oh my gosh, did the pandemic tell us we need to innovate like never before. And I think when we say those things, it can create a lot of pressure on professionals to feel like, oh gosh, I don't know how to do that. I don't know where to start. It's okay. We got you. Got your hand. Yes. We want to be delivering that kind of content to you so that you can do more for your mission and be able to engage even better because the long game will bring these people along and will make donors and believers out of them in the long run. That was beautifully said. But let me just say this, friends. We know you have got an incredible story that truly needs to be shared. Yep. It needs to be shared more. It needs to be shared more brightly and boldly. 
And this framework is going to help you do that in less time than you're spending right now, I promise. And I just also want to piggyback to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope we're not going to the one-ups manile because I'm not trying to. <laughs> but there are people who need to hear this story. Yeah. You have a story to tell. There are people who want to hear it and they didn't know that they needed to hear it and needed it in their life. And so we are going to walk you through how to do this, find the right platform, contour your message. So it, you know, resonates with the audience that you're trying to connect with. It's, it's game changer. And if we can do it with three people in our shop, we think you can do it too. So we're saving a seat for you. Come find us. We're excited.